Okay, so amazing games you guys saw here, but on the day of the launch, there will be over 50 games on the grid store and some amazing games, some amazing games. And over time, by the end of the year, we expect to have well over 100. Just think about this, in just six months of a, pro of a platform launch, to have that many high quality titles is utterly unheard of. And I think the reason for that is actually relatively simple. This is really a discontinuity in the gaming industry. Every 10 years or so, every 10 years or so, new technologies, new technologies make it possible for us to both make video games much, much richer, much, much more beautiful, but also expand the reach. If you go back and think about what made the Nintendo Famicom possible, it was an off-the-shelf 8-bit microprocessor and non-volatile memory, <coughs> ROM. Having ROM that you can put into a cartridge, they engineered their own connectors, started the whole cartridge game delivery system. As a result, the first video game industry was created. It brought great convenience. Don't forget, before this, all of us had to go to arcades to play games. We went to arcades to play games. Quarter after quarter after quarter after school, we played games in arcades. And as a result of the NES, it made it possible for us to have access to games, access to games, convenience of gaming right from your house. 10 years later, another technology emerged and made possible the most successful game platform in history. It was a technology called semi-custom chips. It was possible for a system engineer, in this case, Kuraragi-san, to have architected and designed his own processors, his own processors, even though he had no fab. Semi-custom chips, the early days of what also made NVIDIA possible was what made the PlayStation 2 possible. It also coupled with it a laser format delivery system so that games could be a lot larger. The history of PlayStation 2 is well known. Ten years after that, the internet happened. Devices are now connected to the internet. A new game experience came out, made possible the Xbox Live. Xbox Live defined the generation of Xbox 360, the ability to do digital download into a hard disk drive, made that generation of game consoles particularly unique. We believe, now almost 14 years later, mobile cloud technology is going to start a trend to revolutionize the way games are delivered. As you can see just now, with just point, click, and play, we're going to be able to make gaming a lot more accessible, a lot more convenient. A lot more accessible and a lot more convenient. But one of the things that's really cool about this particular approach is that it can also be much, much more beautiful. If you take a look at the, curt, the way Shield is architected, instead of one generation fixed in time, 10 years later, another generation architecturally incompatible, starts a whole new cycle. Game developers completely jettison the old one, comes up to the new one. That particular approach is terrific for the millions of gamers that currently enjoy game consoles. But what we would love to do is expand the reach of gaming to 100 times more than that. And that, the console approach is simply not possible. We think that using mobile cloud, we can not only expand the reach of gaming, make it so much more convenient, but in addition to that, make it so much more powerful. In fact, if you look at what we were showing you just now, the Shield is a couple of two plus times more powerful than, than the Xbox 360. But Grid, powered by the GeForce GTX, is a couple of times more powerful than the most powerful game console in the world today. It is possible for us not only to make gaming more convenient, but also more amazing. Let me show you one more thing, just to bring the point home. I'm about to show you a demonstration that is, just isn't possible on a game console today. 
This is a demonstration that was shown for the very first time on the highest end PC. It was a $3,000 PC just a little bit shy of two years ago. And it was delivered on a $3,000 PC at 30 frames per second. All the lights are dynamic, particle systems everywhere, physically based rendering so the materials look rich, the animation's amazing, the complexity mind boggling, physics simulations all over the place, explosions, crashes, the atmospheric effects, you feel like it's real. This is the most cinematic experience that I have ever seen running in real time. You're about to see this running completely in real time. It's based on an engine called the UE4. Tim Sweeney and the guys at Epic do amazing work. This is unquestionably the most advanced game engine in the world. I understand that yesterday he announced that he's gonna give away the most advanced game engine in the world for free. Now, I recognize that voice. That's a Mark Rain, yeah. That's a, that's a down south, yeah. Mark Rain, down south, yeah. Are you nuts? Free? Do you know how many people worked on it? Well, it turned out we worked on it too. And because he gave it away for free, all of the physics work and the engine work that we did it, did inside it, the, it must have been several hundred man years of work that we did in the physics engine because of his charitable donation. We also gave it away, physics for free, inside the UE4. What do you guys think about that? That's just craziness, Mark. So, let me show you now something that, has, that is simply not possible today on the current generation game console. However, we can enjoy it in the cloud. Ladies and gentlemen, the Unreal Engine for the demo, a real-time animated demo. This is actually completely running in real time, a demo called The Infiltrator. Is that amazing?
a glimpse at the future of video games coming very, very soon to a television near you. That demo is really amazing. Really, really amazing.